Hello friends, and um, have a happy whatever winter holiday it is that you happen to celebrate. Uh, secular, religious, uh, an excuse for a knees up, or, or whatever else it might be. So I thought that this season, uh, this, this holiday, is often lonely for a lot of people, it disrupts a lot of people's routines and perhaps a little bit more egotistically I thought perhaps uh, you might miss me so I have pre-recorded uh, a couple of folk tales for a few days that we're busy over the holidays so that you have a, a friendly warm presence telling you a story uh, just for something to listen to uh, I know people get bored and slide back to the internet and uh, there often isn't much there for them at this time of year so I've got my drink I've got my book of Russian folk tales and I'm going to read you a few for the next couple of days the snow maiden in a Russian village lived an old man and a woman. They lived peaceably enough, but their lives were empty, for they had no children of their own to cheer their passing days. When winter came, it laid its deep carpet of snow across the fields and meadows, and invited the village children to play in its soft folds. The old man and woman gazed wistfully at them from their window, feeling more lonely than ever. But then the old man had an idea. Cheer up, old woman, he said. Let's make a daughter out of snow. The old woman agreed. So they put on their coats, went into the yard, and began to build a daughter out of snow. First they rolled a ball, then added arms and legs, and finally placed a snow head upon snow shoulders. The old man stuck on a nose and drew a mouth and eyes. And then a wonderful thing happened. The snow maiden's lips grew red, her eyes opened, and she gazed at the old folk and smiled a warm, grateful smile. Then shaking off the snowflakes, she stepped out of the snow, a real, live girl. The old pair were overjoyed. They took her into their cottage, unable to believe their good fortune. In the passage of time, the snow maiden grew up, not by the day, but by the hour. And every day, she grew more lovely than ever. Her skin was whiter than the winter snow, her hair russet like the autumn leaves, her eyes blacker than a raven's wing. And yet, it seemed she had no colour at all. There was no end to the old folk's love of their daughter. They doted on her every minute of the day. And for her part, the snow maiden grew up clever, modest and kind. She did all the work about the cottage for her parents. And when she lifted her voice to sing, the whole village stopped to listen. Winter passed. Spring sunshine began to warm the land, patches of green grass appeared amidst the snowy wastes, and larks took to their woodland song. Yet the snow maiden grew sad. "'What is it, daughter?' asked the old folk. "'What ails you?' "'All is well, father. All is well, mother,' she replied in a hoarse whisper. By and by the last snows melted, the first flowers blossomed, sprinkling the meadows with golds and pinks and blues, and the birds of summer returned from their winter migration. The snow maiden grew quieter and sadder every day. She would hide from the sun, seek out a chill shadow and stretch out her pale arms to the rain. Once a black storm cloud burst, sending down big hailstones. That excited the snow maiden. She ran out to catch the hailstones as though they were precious gems. Yet no sooner had the sun melted the hailstones than she burst into tears. So bitter you would think a sister was mourning her own dear brother. Summer followed spring, 
and her friends made ready to gather berries in the woods. Come with us, dear snow maiden, they called to her. We're going to play and sing and dance in the forest glades. The snow maiden shrank back into the shadows, but the old woman urged, Go on, daughter, enjoy yourself with your friends. The girls took the snow maiden with them into the woods, picked flowers, plaited them into garlands for their hair, sang songs and skipped along the woodland paths, as merry and carefree as scarlet poppies in a summer breeze. Only the snow maiden did not join in. She walked alone, head drooping, no smile upon her frozen lips. As the damp of evening descended upon the forest, the girls gathered brushwood for a fire, and when it was alight, they took turns jumping over it. The snow maiden alone hung back, fearful of the orange flames that flicked their tongues towards her. But when her turn came, the girls pushed her forward, not letting her go. With tears glistening upon her pallid cheeks, she leaped over the fire and, in a sighing hiss, was gone, melted away into a wisp of white mist. When her friends looked about them, the snow maiden was nowhere to be seen. They cupped their hands and shouted, Snow maiden, where are you? But nothing was heard save the echo of their voices and the distant hooting of an owl deep in the forest. I can make it happen. I can get you anything you want. You just have to talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. I'm your priest. I'm your shrink. I'm your main connection to the switchboard of songs. I'm the magic man. The Santa Claus of the subconscious. You say it. You even think it. Yeah, I have it. 